The video you're about to see addresses the containment of leaks that could occur in chlorine cylinders. While leaks in these cylinders rarely occur, prompt corrective action by trained personnel using special equipment is required. The Chlorine Institute Emergency Kit A featured in this video contains the latest recommended additions and revisions, Edition 12. Note, this video also includes, for reference, instructions for A kits manufactured prior to January 2013. Refer to the Chlorine Institute's online bookstore for the most current information. The information in this video and the Chlorine Institute Emergency Kit A instruction booklet for 100 and 150 pound chlorine cylinders is drawn from sources believed to be reliable. Users must be aware that changing technology may require a change in the equipment or the instructions concerning their use. Appropriate steps should be taken to ensure that the material is current when used. This video is designed and intended solely to aid qualified instructors in providing training and not as a substitute for such training. For leaks, Kit A is not designed to stop. The Chlorine Institute recovery vessel is available. Current DOT regulations require the reporting of any release in transportation via Form 5800. All transportation releases, no matter the quantity, require reporting to the DOT. Basically, if you can see it, smell it, or hear it during the transportation function, it requires reporting to the DOT. Chlorine emergency should be handled by your trained on-site personnel. Regardless of the quantity released, any problems or releases involving chlorine cylinders should be reported to your supplier. They can offer valuable advice and assistance in handling a chlorine emergency. If the supplier cannot be reached or cannot respond immediately, get help by activating Chlorwrap, the Chlorine Emergency Plan. Call the dispatch agency for assistance, Chemtrek in the United States and Canutech in Canada. Before any attempt is made to find and correct leaks, personnel must be fully trained in the proper use of the tools and devices of this kit. This training must also include a knowledge of chlorine and its properties, the proper respiratory protection to use, and the proper protective clothing to use with chlorine. The Chlorine Institute Kit A is designed for use with standard approved chlorine cylinders only. The kit is not designed for, nor should be used on, a cylinder determined to be liquid full. The kit contains special wrenches to ensure safe chlorine cylinder valve operation and application of the kit devices. Use only these wrenches. Leaks should be handled only by trained and properly protected workers. They must work in pairs and never alone. Leaks can usually be found using ammonia vapors from a squeeze bottle partially filled with aqua ammonia. Kit A contains the tools and devices designed to contain leaks that may occur in and around the cylinder valve and in the cylinder sidewall. Leaks on a cylinder valve can occur around the stem packing, through the valve seat, around inlet threads at the cylinder, and at the fusible plug on the valve. To stop a stem packing leak, use wrench 200A to ensure that the valve stem is closed tightly. Tighten the packing nut with the valve wrench. To stop a leak from the valve outlet, apply and tighten the valve outlet cap using the valve wrench. Open and tightly close the valve stem several times. This may remove any foreign material from the stem or seat, allowing the valve to seat off. Slowly loosen the valve outlet cap. There will be chlorine trapped between the valve stem and the cap. After the trapped chlorine has dissipated, check for leaks. If no leaks are found, the cylinder can be connected to your process. If the cylinder is not to be used immediately, replace the valve outlet cap. Tighten it securely and put the cylinder back in storage. 
If the valve inlet threads are leaking at the cylinder, slowly tighten the valve into the cylinder by applying steady pressure with wrench 201. Caution: Inspect the valve and cylinder threads to ensure integrity prior to tightening. Otherwise, apply device 1. Test for leaks. All of the above leaks can be contained using device 1. The following leaks are rare but would be classified as major incidents. They usually occur when a cylinder is mishandled. For example, if the valve protective housing was not in place when the cylinder was being moved. If valve stem assembly has blown out, hammer the small drift pin A-3 into the valve body. If the valve is broken off at the cylinder, hammer the small drift pin into the valve body remaining in the cylinder. If the complete valve blows out of the cylinder, hammer the large pin A-4 into the cylinder. Test for leaks. Device 1 should be applied after the pins are driven in. Test for leaks. If device 1 does not fit over the pin, secure the cylinder in an isolated area and call your chlorine supplier. Each chlorine cylinder is protected by a fusible metal plug, which is designed to melt prior to rupture. The fusible plug is usually a screwed plug into the valve body, but also can be fusible metal poured directly into the valve body. If the leak is at the threads of the fusible plug, use wrench 203 and tighten the fusible plug slowly. Do not over tighten. Test for leaks. If the leak continues, saw off the fusible plug flush with the valve body and file the surface smooth. Apply Device 2. If the leak is in the fusible plug metal, file the surface of the fusible plug smooth if necessary and apply Device 2. To apply Device 2, loosen the set screw and place the clamp assembly over the valve. Place a gasket between leaking fusible plug metal and the block. Tighten the set screw until the leak stops. Test for leaks with ammonia vapors. If a leak is detected, further tighten the set screw and test for leaks. The above procedure can also be followed for a leak in the fusible metal that is poured into the valve body. Leaks in the fusible plug area can also be contained by applying device 1. Device 1 can be used to contain all leaks in and around the valve area. Device 1 can be applied even if the valve protective housing cannot be removed. Use the paint scraper to remove paint scale and rust from the neck ring and shoulder area of the cylinder. Prepare the base assembly with the chains in outermost position. Roll the standing cylinder up onto the base segments and center it on the base assembly. Remove the outlet cap from the vent valve on hood 1A3 and open the valve using wrench 200A. Adjust the cap screws so the hooks are at their lowest position. The hood sealing surface should be inspected prior to gasket application. This should be a smooth surface without dents and gouges that could cut the gasket. Place a new gasket on the hood and install over the leaking valve or the valve protective housing. Attach the chains to the corresponding hooks. Ensure that the chains are straight and not twisted using the appropriate link to avoid excess slack in the chains. Hand tighten all cap screws. Ensure that the chains are against the cylinder at the base. Tighten the three cap screws equally with the wrenches supplied in the kit, forcing the hood and gasket against the shoulder of the cylinder. Close the vent valve on the hood. Test for leaks. If the leak persists, further tighten the cap screws in the area of the leak. When the leak has been contained, replace and tighten the vent valve cap using wrench 200A. Test for leaks. 
If extreme pressure has been applied to the cap screws, check the foot ring on the bottom of the cylinder for possible distortion. For Chlorine Institute emergency kits manufactured prior to 2013, use the following procedures. Device 1 can be used to contain all leaks in and around the valve area. Device 1 can be applied even if the valve protective housing cannot be removed. Use the paint scraper to remove paint, scale, and rust from the neck ring and shoulder area of the cylinder. Prepare the base assembly to ensure proper position and stability of the base segments. Secure the ramp between two base segments by putting the ramp hook into the center spacer slot. This prevents the base assembly from sliding while the cylinder is being positioned on the base. Roll standing cylinder up the ramp and center it on the base assembly. Remove the outlet cap from the vent valve on the hood 1A2 and open the valve using wrench 200A. Place a new gasket on the hood and install over the leaking valve or the valve protective housing. Adjust the cap screws so the screw points extend only slightly below the yoke. Place the yoke on top of the hood with the cap screw points aligned with the dimples on top of the hood. Ensure that the chains are straight and not twisted. Hook the chains over the ears of the yoke using the appropriate length to avoid excess slack in the chains. Hand tighten all cap screws. Ensure that the chains are against the cylinder at the base. Tighten the three outside cap screws equally with wrench 201, forcing the hood and gasket against the shoulder of the cylinder. Keep the center cap screw hand tight against the hood. Close the vent valve on the hood. Test for leaks. If the leak persists, further tighten the cap screw in the area of the leak. When the leak has been contained, replace and tighten the vent valve cap using the appropriate wrench. Test for leaks. If extreme pressure has been applied to the cap screws, check the foot ring on the bottom of the cylinder for possible distortion. A leak in the cylinder sidewall can be contained by applying device 8. If internal corrosion is suspected, extreme caution should be used in applying the sidewall kit. Consider other options such as the recovery vessel. First, position the cylinder on its side and rotate it until the leak is on the top. This results in a chlorine gas leak and not a liquid leak. Adjust the cap screw into the yoke until the cap screw point extends slightly below the yoke. Use the paint scraper to remove loose paint and rust from the area. Slip one end of the strap under the cylinder and pull it through. Align the strap with the leak in the cylinder. Ensure that the strap is straight and not twisted. Position the gasket 8GV inside the patch and set to the side of the leak. Center the yoke and cap screw into the depression on top of the patch. Hook the strap to an ear on each side of the yoke. Keep the strap as short as possible. Position the patch over the leak. Tighten the cap screw by hand until the leak stops. Tighten the thumb screws until they contact the cylinder. Do not over tighten. Adjust the thumb screws for stabilization only. Sealing pressure is supplied by the middle cap screw. This stops the leak. Caution! If there is any evidence of weakening of the cylinder wall, immediately discontinue tightening the cap screw. Test for leaks. If the leak persists, further tighten the cap screw. Thumb screws can be adjusted independently to apply pressure on the opposite sides of the gasket to stop the leak. Test for leaks. For Chlorine Institute emergency kits manufactured prior to 2013, use the following procedures. A leak in the cylinder sidewall can be contained by applying device 8. 
If internal corrosion is suspected, extreme caution should be used in applying the sidewall kit. Consider other options such as the recovery vessel. First, position the cylinder on its side and rotate it until the leak is on the top. This results in a chlorine gas leak and not a liquid leak. Adjust the cap screw into the yoke until the cap screw point extends slightly below the yoke. Slip one end of the chain under the cylinder and pull it through. Align the chain with the leak in the cylinder. Ensure that the chain is straight and not twisted. Use the paint scraper to remove loose paint and rust from the area. Position the gasket 8EV and the patch to the side of the leak. Center the yoke and cap screw into the depression on top of the patch. Hook the chain to an ear on each side of the yoke. Keep the chain as short as possible. Position the gasket and patch over the leak. Tighten the cap screw with wrench 201. Caution! If there is any evidence of weakening of the cylinder wall, immediately discontinue tightening the cap screw. Test for leaks. If the leak persists, further tighten the cap screw. Test for leaks. Some 100 pound and 150 pound chlorine cylinders are designed in such a manner that may make the application of the Chlorine Institute Emergency Kit A devices difficult or impossible. Some of these cylinders may have oversized neck rings that prevent proper placement of the hood when applying device one. The kit devices also are unsuitable for stopping leaks around the cylinder shoulder, base, and foot ring areas. In all of these cases, the Chlorine Institute recovery vessel may be used. All parts of the Chlorine Emergency Kit A should be maintained in a ready-to-use condition. After every use, inspect all parts for damage, wear, and corrosion. Clean and thoroughly dry all parts used. Lubricate all movable parts with a non-reactive lubricant. Replace all gaskets used with new ones. All Viton gaskets are stamped with the date of manufacture and should be removed from emergency use after four years of shelf life. For further guidelines concerning the Viton gaskets, consult your supplier. Spare parts may be purchased by owners of Kit A from the supplier. One supplier of the emergency Kit A is Indian Springs Manufacturing in Baldwinsville, New York. For information on ordering, consult the manufacturer or the Chlorine Institute. The kit should be frequently inspected by the person responsible for the equipment. The kit contents should be checked against the parts list found in the Kit A instruction booklet to ensure that all items are present and ready for use. The box should be sealed after each inspection, and these seals should be broken only by authorized persons or in case of emergency. Many users coordinate the routine inspection with training drills. To maximize the effectiveness of this emergency kit, ensure that it's located in an area that provides easy access but offers protection from the weather. You cannot use it if you cannot get to it. To review, Kit A is designed for use with standard chlorine cylinders only and should never be used on liquid full cylinders. Optional equipment is available for Kit A. For a complete list, please see the Emergency Kit A instruction booklet or contact your supplier. One supplier of the Emergency Kit A is Indian Springs Manufacturing in Baldwinsville, New York. Personnel must be trained to use the devices of Kit A, as well as to the use of personal protective equipment and the use of chlorine and its properties. If a chlorine leak occurs, contact your supplier immediately. If further assistance is needed, activate Chlorowrap through Chemtrack in the United States or Canutech in Canada. Always work calmly, in pairs, and under control. Work to do it right the first time. When applying devices, use only the wrenches supplied with the kit. Always test for leaks after applying any kit device. Make arrangements with your supplier immediately to dispose of any remaining chlorine in the cylinder. Clean, dry, and lubricate all parts after each use. Install only new gaskets, 
and replace gaskets used or after four years of storage. Establish a regular routine for inspecting your kit to ensure all the contents are ready for use. Store the kit where it's easily accessible in an emergency. The Chlorine Institute Emergency Kit A has been a proven tool for the containment of leaks in chlorine cylinders for over a half century. Over this time, the emergency kit has undergone several key design changes with the last major enhancement in January 2013. The 2013 model was designed to be lighter, easier to apply, and to increase the overall effectiveness. A comparison between the current 2013 design and previous models highlights these key new features. Kit A Device 1 2013 now contains an integrated hood and yoke device as compared to the previous two-piece configuration. The integrated hood yoke design, Hood 1A3, allows for the independent tightening of each chain while only using three bolts as opposed to four. This integrated design also significantly lowers the center of gravity of the unit, making it much more effective and easier to apply correctly the first time. The chain and base assembly differs significantly as well from previous versions. The 2013 design now features a pre-assembled low-profile base. This design allows for the easy rolling of the cylinder on top of the assembly without the use of a ramp. The chains and base segments in the 2013 model are also much lighter, making the device easier to handle and to store. Overall, Device 1 of the 2013 model is lighter, more user-friendly, and easier to apply than previous versions. Device 2 2013 has been modified to now fit over alternate valve designs. Fuse plug leaks on valves with larger diameter packing nuts can now be sealed by Device 2. Kit A Device 8 has also been significantly redesigned to improve ease of use and efficiency of the device. The 2013 model uses a radial button-style gasket to seal a cylinder sidewall leak. The gasket design requires much less pressure to seal than the previous flat patch design. This advantage allows for applying the device by hand without a wrench. The 2013 design also replaces the standard side chain with a durable adjustable strap. The strap is lighter, wider, and evenly spreads out the force against the cylinder sidewall without the pinch points of a chain. Device 8 of the 2013 model seals the cylinder sidewall leaks more effectively with less pressure than the previous kit patch design. The Chlorine Institute Emergency Kit A Model 2013 has been designed to improve overall effectiveness and ease of application for the chlorine emergency responder. For leaks that Kit A is not designed to stop, recovery vessels in accordance with DOT regulation and ASME codes are available. If the leak is on the side or the bottom of the chlorine cylinder, place the cylinder in a horizontal position with the leak in the uppermost position, in the vapor space. If the leak is in the valve or valve threads, leave the cylinder in the upright position until ready to place into the recovery vessel. Take the recovery vessel to an area in close proximity to the leaking cylinder and perform the following preparatory work. In an alternating pattern, loosen the T-bolts that retain the hinged lid until they are all just snug. Remove the valve protective cap from the vent valve on the recovery vessel. Remove the outlet cap and open the vent valve on the recovery vessel. It's important to open the vent valve to prevent pressure buildup in the recovery vessel when trying to seal it. Move the recovery vessel into position directly in front of the chlorine cylinder and fully loosen the T-bolts. Swing the T-bolts from the lugs of the hinge closure. Open the hinge closure. Inspect the O-ring gasket, part number RV-9, to make sure it's installed properly. Inspect the seating surface on the recovery vessel. Position the bottom of the chlorine cylinder on the slide rails on the inside of the recovery vessel. 
slide the entire chlorine cylinder, bottom first, into the recovery vessel. Again, inspect the O-ring gasket and seating surfaces. Remove any foreign substances that may have gotten on the O-ring or seating surface. Close the hinge cover by positioning the lid evenly on the matting sealing surface to assure proper sealing. Swing the T-bolts into position and in an alternating pattern, tighten the bolts snugly until the lid is secure. Close the vent valve and install the outlet cap on the valve. Check for leaks with ammonia vapor. Install the valve protective cap. Check the hinge lid sealing joints for leaks with ammonia vapor. If white smoke indicates leaking chlorine, tighten the T-bolts again in an alternating pattern. Do not over tighten. If tightening the T-bolts won't stop the leak, do the following. Follow the instructions for removing a cylinder from the recovery vessel. Clean all sealing surfaces and install a new O-ring. Repeat the procedure for placing the cylinder into the recovery vessel. Consult with the chlorine cylinder supplier immediately and arrange for disposal. The recovery vessel with a full cylinder of chlorine will weigh approximately 525 to 575 pounds. Finally, it's better to prevent leaks than having to stop them. Stored cylinders and those in use should be inspected and tested for leaks on a routine basis. Kit owners should also be aware that several enhancements have been made to the Emergency Kit A. Please see the Chlorine Institute's online bookstore for the most current edition. All emergency kits should be maintained in complete and up-to-date condition. For information concerning kit enhancements or for replacement parts, please contact Indian Springs Manufacturing. Additional information concerning chlorine and its properties, emergency procedures, and personal protective equipment can be found in the publications available from the Chlorine Institute. For further information, please contact the Chlorine Institute, Incorporated. With proper use of the Chlorine Institute Emergency Kit A, potentially dangerous chlorine gas leaks can be safely and securely contained.